So let me go into, I'll go into some of the reasons why I'm not a fan of it right now. Um, you know, one is just kind of a, a always problem, um, a lack of real assets. The, the strategy doesn't incorporate things like commodities. It doesn't incorporate real estate. And that's fine as long as you're in a low inflation world. But if you you enter a period of higher inflation and you don't have those real assets, you can end up with some, you know, you can end up with a decade plus a pretty negative, you know, um, pretty um, negative or, or, or not negative, uh, just mediocre performance. And, you know, the obvious uh, example that's given is the 70s um, and where if you look at the 70s and you look at, say, stocks on an inflation adjusted basis, the performance was worse than the Great Depression. Um, if you look at it not adjusted for inflation, it doesn't it doesn't look so horrible. Um, but the if you end up in a high inflation period and you don't have real asset exposure, which this strategy doesn't have, you, you're really going to suffer in your performance. And there's a lot of reasons why right now we have concerns that the current bout of inflation uh, is not purely transitory. Um, you know, it's not going to go away and stay away for another decade or so that we're actually into a period where you're likely to have continued bouts of inflation coming up. Um, so I, I kind of list that as one, one problem or one issue with the strategy is there really is no inflation protection in that strategy. Yeah. So the, I mean, like we said, this is a, a simple baseline strategy. It's a passive strategy or a strategic strategy. Um, we like to, to to look at things a little bit more um, tactical at our firm. So we do um, incorporate things like real estate and commodities. Now you can get exposure to real estate and commodities, for example, through equities, but you also are going to have the exposure uh, Without just having the hard assets in your portfolio, you're going to get an equity type exposure that may be negative relative to the inflation that you're seeing in in the economy. Yeah, and um, you know, I think in terms of what the sixty forty doesn't have, um, it really doesn't have anything that isn't U.S. large cap growth, and it really um, because of we'll get into this in a little bit because of what's happened with that index, it, it really doesn't even have, it really isn't going to give you even a lot of exposure to large cap value. Um, so, you know, when you go out and you, you look at what's cheap or what's priced well, a lot of foreign stocks are priced pretty reasonably. A lot of small and mid cap stocks are priced pretty reasonably. Um, there's been a um, gap in performance that usually gets closed between value and growth. And if that happens, you could expect to see value outperform. So when you go out in the world and you, you look at as an investor, what, what's cheap, um, you know, what's reasonably priced, uh, they, that's mostly things you're not going to get a ton of exposure to right now with the S&P 500. So on that list of things you're not getting along with real assets, you're, you're for the most part not getting reasonably priced or cheap stocks. And in, in, in large parts of the global market, as well as the U.S. market, you're not getting exposure to. So I'd, I'd, I'd throw that in as another part uh, problem with this strategy in, in regards to what you're not getting with it. Yeah. And yeah, I think you typically will see this strategy be purely domestic strategy. Um, and, and I think that there are benefits to, you know, tilting toward um, an overweight to maybe a, an international stock. Um, uh, you know, which kind of brings me to the why why this strategy is in the headlines. Um, you know, that with with what has been going on with the inflation and with the intervention of the monetary authority, the Fed, uh, and then this sort of thing around the world. One of the benefits of this strategy is the the correlation between fixed income and equities. And when you have this big macro money that really favors the growth stocks that you've been referring to, um, it, these correlations tend to all merge and approach one at the same time. So where this 60-40 portfolio may have looked great 
a few years back when all the correlations were one, your bonds portions going up, your equity portions going up. Um, it, when it goes down, they both go down at the same time. So, so the strategy in the near and short term has lost some of that diversifying, some of the, the, the diversifying factors that, that, you know, have, have really sort of defined the strategy over the long term.